Does your radio need an FCC license? Well, it depends. Let's talk about it on Fast Facts. Have you ever had a remote controlled fan that turns on and off all on its own? And then it turns out that your garage door opener was on the same frequency? That's a really minor example with a really minor consequence, but imagine if it was a more major example with a more major consequence. To avoid tragedies happening, the FCC implemented rules to allow for the monitoring of these frequencies. So why does it depend? Well, there are several different types of radio services, but the two most popular are the FRS and the GMRS. Now, the FRS stands for the Family Radio Service. These are perfect for outdoor activities like camping, hunting, hiking, fishing, anything that's done within a relatively close range, about one to two miles depending on the terrain. FRS radios usually only consist of several handheld radios or walkie-talkies, and they can't be modified to amplify the signal. Now, that does mean that you're sharing frequencies, and that can open you up to interference. GMRS stands for the General Mobile Radio Service. These radios are generally louder and clearer than FRS radios because they dedicate more power to put behind the frequency, which means less interference overall. These radios provide much more flexibility and power. They usually consist of a series of handheld radios, mobile communications, and repeater systems that allow for a more broad range of communications. While there is a cost to operating a GMRS system, the FCC grants you a private frequency, which severely diminishes the chance of interference from other radios. It is a mild inconvenience to pay for a license, but the penalties for operating an unlicensed radio could result in hefty fines from the FCC. This has been a Two Way Radio Gears Fast Facts with Zach. Thanks for dropping by. We'll see you next time.